Good afternoon, everyone. This is Rob Foster, the uh, Central Region Sales Engineer for ACM. Uh, it's uh, now one minute after 12, so we'll give it uh, one more minute, uh, see who else joins, and then we will get started. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. This is Rob Foster again, uh, sales engineer for the Central Region. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started today. Uh, same format as usual. Uh, feel free to ask questions in the chat. And at the end of the demonstration, we will uh, unmute everyone so you can come off, uh, come off mute and uh, ask your questions that way as well. So today we're going to talk about uh, setting up a first card unlock scenario. And then I'm also going to cover how to set up double swipe. Of course, double swipe can be used to uh, unlock doors, secure doors, so on and so forth. So the presentation is going to be very brief, uh, and then we're going to dive right into the configuration portion. OK, so objectives today. Uh, we're going to talk about first card unlock and double swipe and how to configure uh, those things. Hey, Rob, sorry to interrupt. Your slides yeah. are static and we seen your, uh, we're now seeing the presentation mode. We're actually looking at your, your screen with the slides. Oh, okay. Let me adjust that. Sorry, folks. Are you see, uh, uh, Francisco? Are you seeing the actual yeah. PowerPoint screen? Is I'm looking at the mouse. Yeah, we're looking at mouse moving right now. Okay, let me just. We'll just uh, switch screens here. There you go. Uh, let's see. Too many screens, Rob. <laughs> yes, that's, uh, apologize. <laughs> All this technology. Uh, let's see. It's confusing. I have seven screens here, so I know what you mean. It gets confusing. Yeah. Here we go. Folks, just one second. Just a little Maybe technical. See it now. now it's, uh, we're looking at your, um, that's not your presentation. That's your comment, comment page. Yep. Okay. Let's fix that. Oh, let's see here. There we go. Now I can change the screen. <laughs> Sorry. I promise you all I'll be of um I'll be giving you useful information today. Will be well worth the wait. You're doing this on yeah. purpose, aren't you? Just to build anticipation. I get it. Yeah. There we go. Let's start it again. Okay. Now, are we seeing the Perfect. correct slide? Yeah, you got it. Perfect. Sorry, folks. Um, okay. So we were starting to talk about objectives. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go through first card unlock and double swipe. Um, 
uh, most of the presentation today is going to be the actual demonstration um, and there'll be I'll cover both of those scenarios and then of course we'll take questions and answers and just a couple things first card in um, of course when we talk about a first card in scenario we're talking about unlocking the doors on the schedule only if somebody is actually in the building um, and that means somebody has presented their card you know within a certain time frame uh, that indicates the building is occupied now that could be anybody that has a valid card or of in the scenario I'm going to show you, you could actually restrict that to certain tokens or certain identities. Um, just keep in mind, uh, this is going to work on ACM 5.x or newer, preferably newer. Um, you're going to need to have Mercury controllers or subcontrollers, so this is not going to work on HID hardware. And as you'll see as I go through, we're going to have to require or we're going to have to configure policies, groups, schedules global actions and linkages. Now, when we go over to doing the double swipe, we're gonna do that a little bit differently. We're gonna use macros and triggers for that. So the objective with uh, double swipe, of course, is in, in my example, it's going to, going to be to manually change the door mode uh, based on presenting your card twice within a specified amount of time. Um, my example, I'll use five seconds. So if you present the card, twice within five seconds, it's going to initiate a door mode change. Same prerequisites of ACM 5.x or newer, Mercury controllers, and of course, as I mentioned, we're gonna to have to use macros and triggers. Okay, so let's jump into the demo portion. So I'm gonna pull my system over here. Now, the first scenario we're gonna talk about, we're gonna uh, handle the first card unlock scenario and what we're going to do is we're going to basically use a door policy to change the custom mode on the door so I'm just going to open up the door here um, you see right now the normal door configuration does not have a custom mode so if you all remember if you weren't setting up a first card unlock scenario if you were just scheduling this door to unlock you know Monday through Friday eight to five Typically, you would go in here and you'd set the custom mode to unlock, and then you would select your schedule. So what we're going to do in this case, because we don't want this to, to happen um, unless somebody is actually carded in. So we're gonna use a policy to apply the custom mode and custom schedule to the door after somebody is carded in. So let's start out, let's, um, let's uh, blank this back out. And let's start by creating our policy. So we will go over here to roles and then policies. And let's see, we've already got that in there for us. So we'll give it a name. This uh, policy is going to be for a door. So we'll save that. Our Mercury tab will appear. As you can see, there's no HID tab. So this is gonna work with Mercury controllers only. Now, I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna select access type as single. Uh, the policy requires you to do that, even though this is already set in the door configuration, um, you'll still need to set that as single. And then everything else you would leave, leave blank except for the custom mode and custom schedule. So I'm going to select unlock. Now, I went ahead and created my custom schedule before we got on the call. And I called this one my unlock schedule. So, and I'm gonna go back, I'll show you the details of the schedule. We're actually gonna use two different schedules. One schedule, uh, in this case, the unlock schedule, that's when we want the actual door to unlock and then of course re-secure. Now you'll see this first then schedule, that period's gonna be a little bit broader. So it's gonna encompass the same times as the unlock schedule but we'll probably set it for maybe a half an hour, maybe an hour before it's scheduled to unlock each day. You know, of course that's completely configurable, whatever your end user wants to do. Some people do 30 minutes, some people do an hour, doesn't matter. But basically the first end schedule, we'll use that to activate um, our global action that installs our policy for the custom mode. So, 
you know, in my example, uh, the doors are going to unlock eight to five Monday through Friday. As long as somebody cards in, you know, after 7 a.m., uh, that custom schedule will be applied. Now, also, you don't have just that window of seven to eight. You know, say this is a day you're going to open up late, and, um, you know, that's no problem. It's, it's, as soon as somebody comes in, if they come in at 10 a.m., then that policy be, will be applied with the custom unlock schedule. So I'm going to select my uh, unlock schedule here. And I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And now uh, with a policy, we have to apply that to a group of doors. Now, in my case, I only have one door, but we still have to create a group for that one door. So I'm going to go over here to Groups. And let's see. Now, I'll just say door. So we'll go over here to the policies tab. This is how we're going to link that policy we just created to the group. Um, so I'm going to grab this door unlock schedule policy. I'm going to move it over here to members. I'm going to save that. Now, the, we need to create the actual members of the group. So we'll go to the members tab here. Um, we'll select type. Uh, we'll select that or select door under type rather. And we only have one option because I only have one door configured. You could do multiple doors here. You know, you're not limited to just one door. That's just all I have in, on this particular demo system. So I'm going to save that. Now, what you could do at this point, if you want to make sure that your policy is uh, set up correctly and you're within the uh, unlock period, and in this case we are because, let's go look at that schedule real quick. So our unlock schedule is, oops, let's change that. I said eight to five, so we're going to make it eight to five. Monday through Friday. Okay, so it is eight to five. Of, of course, I'm gonna set the schedule to scan and we'll leave it at on scan um, because we're going, going to uh, remove the schedule from the custom unlock field with the policy. So that is set. So now we have the policy configured. We have the group. Uh, let's take a look at the door state currently. So the door currently is closed and it's in card only mode. So let's go back over here. Let's go to our policies. And I just, I like to test things as I go through just to make sure, um, you know, I'm setting up things correctly. Uh, of course, you have to keep in mind if you're, if, if you're working at a end user site and the site is live, they may not want the front door or other doors to unlock. So um, hopefully, you know, you're in an environment where the system hasn't been fully commissioned yet and you can do some testing along the way. So how I'm going to test this, I'm just going to simply uh, click here on the yellow X to install the policy. So I've installed the policy. Now let's go back and look at the door state. So we are within that unlock period. So you'll see the static or excuse me, status is now unlocked. Now one thing I want to point out this policy is in effect. You know, we see here the check mark, the policy is installed. But when you go and look at the door configuration, you're not going to see anything listed here for custom mode and custom schedule. Even though the policy has applied that, this, what you're seeing here is the normal door configuration, you know, when no policies are installed. So just keep that in mind. Uh, when you're looking at this screen, it's not going to show you that the policy is in effect by showing you the custom mode and schedule. Okay, so I've, uh, I know my policy and my group works if I manually turn it on. Obviously, that's not going to help us too much if we have to manually turn it on and off each day. So I'm going to turn it off for now. And I'm going to go back, sure, back and make sure everything went back to normal which it did, great. So now we can do the second piece of this. Um, 
So what we're going to want to do is create some automation for this to happen. And to do that, we're going to need to use uh, global actions and linkages. So I'm going to start with the global actions. So I'm going to create one uh, to install the door unlock policy. So my type is going to be policy install. And in this case, I will install it. And I'm going to save that. Now I have to create another global action to turn the policy off. So we will do that next. And same thing, policy install slash uninstall, and our subtype will be uninstall for this. Now, if you wanted to, again, to make sure you set up your global actions, uh, if you wanted to, you could execute them here and kind of do that same procedure we did before, um, you know, and test along the way. You could execute this, that'll install the door policy, then execute this, and that will uninstall it. So I just executed it. We should see our door. Yep. Go to unlock. Now we'll put it back. So let's see here, our door status. Yeah, it's gone back to card only. Perfect. So our global actions work if we manually execute them. So we don't want to manually, manually execute them. We want them to execute when somebody uses their card. So I'm going to go over to global linkages. And I'm going to add a global linkage. So I'm going to use this one to actually install the policy. Now here's where I'm gonna use that second schedule we created. So that first end schedule that we created, I'm gonna use that here. And this is, I'm gonna to have to go back and look in the schedule. I think it's, it's either 30 minutes or, two, or up to an hour before eight o'clock. We'll go back and fix that schedule and take a look at it. But we don't want this linkage to run. We don't wanna install the policy, you know, if it's six o'clock, you know, the facility's locked down. Somebody comes back in because they forgot something after they, you know, went home. We don't want that to indicate that the building is occupied and the next morning unlock the doors. So we're restricting that just to that time frame of, you know, the, the unlock schedule itself and then a little bit of time before it. So I'm going to click save here. I'm going to... Uh, my device is going to be door, in this case the front door, but again, you could have this activate on multiple doors if you wanted to. Um, you know, you're not restricted to just one door in this case. Now, my uh, event that I'm looking for uh, is local grant. Here we go. I'm going to save that. And then what I want to happen in my action, I'm going to skip tokens for right now. I want to install, uh, install the door unlock policy. So this is the global action that installs the door unlock policy. Now I'm going to save that. So the way this logic reads now is that if somebody presents their card at the front door within the first in schedule time frame, and they get a local grant, we're going to install that door unlock policy. Now, if you wanted to restrict that to just, you know, certain people, you know, you don't want, maybe you want to make sure a manager is on site before the door is unlocked. Then you could take the extra step of going to tokens here. You could find a token of somebody. Um, and of course, it is by token. In this case, you can see my identity has three tokens. So you'd have to select all of those tokens if this were the person that you wanted to unlock the door. So if I do that, then I'm the only person that can do the first card unlock. So I'm just going to remove that for now. Just wanted you all to know that that option's available. And we'll go ahead and finish configuring this. So I'm going to save that. Now we need a way to uh, uninstall the policy at the end of the day. Because um, obviously, if we just leave it this way, the policy is going to remain in effect. Um, 
you know, the doors will continue to unlock on that custom unlock schedule each day. So we want to remove it each day. So I'm going to create a second global linkage. Uh, let's see. We'll do, we'll call this uninstalled door policy. And basically, I'm just going to leave this active 24 7. And we're going to go to devices here. And what we're going to do is we're going to watch for this door to change from unlock back to card only. Because that custom schedule is going to create, is going to do that for us. So when we hit five o'clock, the door is going to go back to card only. And so we're going to trigger on that. And we're going to use that event to also uninstall the policy. So let me move my front door over here. Okay. So here we go, door and card only mode. And we'll go to actions here. And when the door switches back to card only mode, we're going to uninstall the door unlock policy using this global action here. So now we have two global linkages. So that takes care of getting the door unlocked if somebody's on site. And of course, uh, you know, we're uninstalling the policy at the end of the day. Now, what happens if they want to lock the door during the day? Well, that's where we need to create another global linkage um, to, that would allow them to secure the door. Maybe they're closing early, um, you know, or for whatever reason. We need to give them a means to uh, basically secure the door without having to, you know, log into the software. So we're going to add a third global linkage here. And I'm going to call this manually restore door. And we will have that occur uh, we can just leave that twenty four hours that's fine and I'm gonna select the front door now, let me find my event. Yeah, I, I apologize. I always, uh, here's, here's what I typically do, and this is incorrect. I'm just going to go ahead and point this out to you all. For some reason, I, I always select this one. We're actually looking for the opposite. So uh, let's see if I can find it. Oh, here we go opened unlocked door. So, you know, we're within the unlock schedule. It's 1130. Uh, maybe they're leaving for lunch, you know, whatever. Um, so the door's unlocked that they can walk out and present their card to that reader. And it's not going to give a local grant because the door is unlocked. It's going to create an event called opened unlocked door. So we're going to use that as a um, you know, as our trigger or our event in this case to secure the door. So I'm going to click save there. And we'll go back to actions here. And in this case, we would want to uninstall the door unlock policy. Now, if you set it up this way, it's important to train the end user. Um, you know, a lot of people just walk up to the door and they present their card. You know, they don't look at the light on the reader. You know, obviously, this is important too that your LED on your reader works correctly because that's what's going to indicate if the door is unlocked. Um, but you're going to have to train your end user if they walk up and they, uh, you know, maybe it's an employee that's coming in 30 minutes after, you know, the store is opened. Um, you know, they need to look at the reader. If it's green, don't present your card because if they do, they're going to uh, basically put that door back in card only mode. So, let me save that. And now what we can do is test this to make sure it works. So let's look at the door. It's currently in card only mode. And let's test it and see what happens. 
And if it doesn't work, we'll troubleshoot it real quick. Okay, you probably heard two beeps. Um, now, we're not doing double swipe right now, so there's my first mistake, but you saw that it, uh, it did change uh, the door mode. So, I'm gonna click on it again. And you see that it went to unlock. And that's because we are in the middle of that unlock schedule. Me presenting the card indicated that somebody's on site. So the policy was installed and it was within the unlock period so the door unlocked. So now it's 11.30. Um, I'm the only employee at the store. I'm going to lunch. So I'm gonna walk out the front door. You know, the reader's LED is currently green. I'm gonna present my card. And now the door is gonna go back to close status or excuse me, card only status. So, so we know it works. The only thing we don't know is if it, uh, you know, actually secures, you know, based on the schedule. So let's take a look at that real quick. Let's look at our time. So let's set our schedule to end at 12.28. So here's my unlock schedule. We're going to change this quickly to 1228. And we'll go back to our doors here. And hopefully here in a few seconds, we will see that change. So we've got 10 seconds to wait. Let's go back to the doors. Oops, uh, let me quickly transition it. Sorry, it was already unlocked. Okay, I probably just missed the time frame because I, uh, yeah. Okay, well, my apologies. I kind of messed up that. Um, I didn't have the door unlocked before we uh, hit the time frame. So anyway, um, pro something that I did just, this you know, uh, discover there is we probably do want to limit the uh, time frame that you can toggle uh, the lock status of. We probably do want to limit that to the unlock schedule. So other than that, that is how you set up first card unlock. So I'm going to transition now over to the double swipe scenario. But before I do that, I'm going to turn some of this stuff off because I don't want the what we just set up for first card unlock to interfere with the double swipe. So how I'm gonna turn this stuff off is I'm gonna go over to global linkages. Uh, I could simply delete these if I wanted to, uh, but just in case we have some questions at the uh, end of the session here, I'm going to just basically turn off the actions for these global linkages and that will effectively disable them. That way we have them here for reference in case there's any questions. Okay, let's go here. Okay, and let's take a look at our policies real quick. That is uninstalled, perfect, okay. So let's move over to double swipe. So I mentioned in the, in the uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation that double swipe is configured with macros and triggers. So let me move over to my panel. Won't be hard to find since there's only one panel. And I'm gonna go to macros. I'm gonna create two different macros. Um, the first macro is I'm going to use as my timer. So in the presentation, I mentioned if we do double swipe, we present our card once and then present it again within five seconds. So we have to create a timer. And we also have to um, have a way to indicate that, you know, that the five second period has started and the five second period has ended. So to do that, we're going to set a variable. 
Um, and so I'm going to start by creating this macro, and I'll show you what that looks like. So this is going to be my double swipe timer. Now, so I gave my macro a name. Now I'm going to add specific macro commands. So let's see if I've already, yep, there we go. So in this case, I'm going to set the variable. So I want to, you have 16 different variables that you can choose from. I'm going to use uh, variable one. Now, the variables uh, that you can set in the, uh, on, on the Mercury panel, they're Boolean variables. So it's true, false, zero, one, on, off. Um, you know, you can't actual, actually set you know, numeric values or anything, you know, other than one on or off, basically. So you'll see here, you've got two options. You can set the variable or turn it on, or you can unset it or turn it off. So in this case, we're going to set it. And I want this to occur as part of group A. And all of the actions in the double swipe timer are going to be part of group A. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to add another command. So here we're going to delay for five seconds. So let's find our delay in seconds. There we go. Set that for five. This will be group A again. And now at the end of that five seconds, we want to unset the variable. And this will be a lot clearer once we, we set up the triggers. Uh, and you guys see this in action. So we're going to go down to variable control. Uh, again, we're using variable one. In this case, we're going to unset it. And group A. So here's our macro. Now, obviously that's part of the equation. We have to uh, set up triggers to actually use this macro. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to use a card read to trigger this. So if somebody walks up to the reader, um, presents their card, uh, we're going to start this, we're going to execute this macro. It's going to set that variable, and then after five seconds, turn it back off. Then we're going to set up a second trigger that if they present their card and variable one is set, that's when we're going to toggle the door mode. So there's a brief window that if you present your card that second time, we're going to execute the next macro that I'm going to set up. So let's go over. We're going to set up our second macro, and then we're going to jump into triggers, and we're actually going to have four different triggers that we need to set up. So we finished our first macro. Let's set up our second. Now. I'm going to use this macro to basically um, change the door mode. But you could use this same double swipe uh, feature to, you know, do other things, mask, unmask, and input, fire and output. You know, there's a lot of different things that you could do with the double swipe. The most common is changing the door mode. Uh, that's probably, you know, I probably talked to at least one person a week. Um, you know, about how to set up the double swipe timer to specifically change the door mode. And you'll notice too in the handouts, um, I'll just go ahead and point that out while we're talking about it. Uh, you know, of course, the, the, the presentation is in the handouts, but also there are two knowledge base articles. Uh, one is how to set up the first card unlock. Um, so you, you all have that for reference. Make sure you download that. And also, there's a knowledge base article on how to set up the double swipe timer and specifically to, un to change the door mode. So let me uh, go ahead and set up our, we're going to change the door mode. So I gave the new macro a uh, name here and I'm going to add two commands. So let's see. So my first action is I want to change the door mode to unlocked. So let's 
see, door mode control is my command. And I make it real easy because I only have one door. So we'll select the front door and we will change that to unlocked. Now, my two different commands here are gonna be in two different groups. Unlike my, uh, my uh, uh, double swipe timer where everything was in group A, we're actually gonna put our two commands uh, that we're gonna execute here in two different groups. And you'll see why when we do the triggers. So this one is gonna be group A. And I'm gonna add a second door command. And this will be the command to actually uh, put the door back in card only mode. So we'll do the same thing, door mode control, front door, and we'll put it in card only. We're gonna put this in group B. Now, something to point out here, let me go back to the macro screen. We've got two different macros. The first one has three commands in it and our change door mode that we just did has two commands in it. You could actually combine this into one large macro if you wanted to. You know, you would just have to, the, you know, door mode change to unlocked and to card only would have to be group C and D. I like to put them in separate macros because I might use this double swipe timer for more than just, um, you know, changing the door mode. I might have some other things going on. Um, so I like just organizationally, I, I think it works better. I think it, it's easier to keep things clear. And as you see, as we start to configure the triggers, um, macros are pretty, there's not a whole lot of choices to make with macros. With triggers, there's a whole lot of things that uh, you have to configure and um, just having your macros separated out that way, I think makes things a lot clearer. So let's go over to the triggers because we have to have a way to, to fire these macros that we've created. So I'm gonna go over to triggers now and we're gonna add a trigger. So, um, I'm going to grab this first one for, uh, let's see, I'm going to call this double swipe timer for unlock. And the reason I, there's going to be four different triggers, we could do this with just two triggers, but um, we could do it for two triggers if all we wanted to do was unlock the door. Now, if you want to be able to toggle the door, and what I mean by that is you double swipe to unlock the door and then you want to manually uh, you know put the door back in card only mode you could double swipe again and put the door back in card only mode that's why we're going to need four triggers um, i have seen variations of this um, you know where people want to double swipe and they want the door to unlock and stay unlocked for 15 minutes and then you know secure itself automatically you could do that too you just need to add some more to your macros. Uh, you would change the door mode. You know, you would delay for however many seconds is in 30 minutes, and then you would, you know, have the door change back to card only mode. So that's an option as well. But in this case, we're going to manually change the door mode. You know, we're going to toggle it each time you, you double swipe. So I'm giving this a name. I'm, I'm going to make sure that it's enabled. Here's where I typically, if I make a mistake here, there's what I typically forget is the schedule. So make sure you select a schedule here. I'm just gonna, I want this to work 24 hours, but you could restrict this to business hours if you wanted to or whatever. Now we drop down to macro. Uh, in this case, uh, you know, it's nice and simple for me. I've got it, got it labeled which you know, macro does what. So I'm going to select my double swipe timer because this trigger is just going to start the timer. It's not going to actually unlock the door. So when this uh, you know, action occurs, I want it to only execute actions A. And with the double swipe timer macro, everything's in action A. So we're, we're doing everything in the macro, basically. Now my source is going to be the door because I want this to happen when somebody presents their card. So our source type is door, and my specific source is the front door. 
And then I need to find my event type. So let's see here. This is, I always select the wrong one. Let's go here. There we go. So I'm gonna use uh, access granted full test used. You could select not used here. I would do used and I would, uh, we're gonna change the door configuration to log all accesses used. I find that's a little bit more uh, uh, robust. Um, sometimes when you do not used, um, sometimes the double swipe action doesn't fire. So I'd recommend just using full test used. And what I mean by that is used and not used. Uh, not used is they presented their card and did not open the door. Um, used is they presented their card and then opened the door. So obviously you'd want to uh, set log, log all access is used if, you know, in the case of where you didn't have door contacts, you definitely want to set Set it as log out access is used. So I'm going to save this. This is going to activate our double swipe timer. So let's save that. Now I'm going to create another trigger that's going to look exactly like this one with one exception. So let's create that. And that one exception is going to be if we get a card read and variable one is set. So I'm gonna, when I uh, select variable one here, or uh, select that from the drop down, that indicates that if that condition is met, in this case, variable one, and everything else in the trigger is met, then we're going to uh, you know, fire the appropriate macro. So in this case, we want to unlock the door. So let's see. Uh, let's see, double swipe. Okay, we want to enable our macro, make sure we select a schedule. And in this case, we're going to change the door mode. So we're going to use this second macro. And if you remember in that macro, uh, the door mode change to unlock is uh, part of group A. So we're gonna execute only actions A. And again, everything else is gonna be the same as our previous trigger that we set up. And let's see here. Okay, the only thing different is this right here. So now what will happen is you'll swipe your card the first time, uh, which is this one. It's going to set the variable. And so if I swipe my card again and I get a local grant and that variable one is set, then we're going to uh, I've actually unlock the door. So we're almost there. Uh, we got two more variables to, um, or excuse me, two more triggers to create. And basically what we're going to do is, is reverse this. So if you double swipe, um, we're going to start the, the timer again, but our trigger is going to be a little bit different um, if the door's unlocked. So if the door's unlocked, we, we, there's, there's a different event that's logged. And so we're going to start the timer again and set the variable. And then if that, if you get another swipe, um, then we're going to restore the door you know, back to card only mode. So let's set that portion up. Now I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use the same macro that I set up before, the double swipe timer. Um, I'm gonna get, I'm, in this case, I'm gonna use the same variable. So now, uh, in this case, we're going to execute only actions A, because remember, this is the double swipe timer. You know, those three actions are all part of group A. And our door is going to be our source type, front door. And now we have to find the correct, correct event here. 
And this is the one I always select by mistake. So just I'll point that out to you guys. This is not the right one. This is the correct one down here. So uh, this wording is a little bit different than what you saw in the uh, global linkage, but basically it means the same thing. Basically, somebody has presented their card to a door that's currently unlocked. So let's see if we got everything here. Looks like we do. Uh, in this case, we're just starting the timer again. We're not actually unlocking the door. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to create the same thing again, except for I'm going to uh, look for variable one to be set. Okay. Just call this one double swipe restore. And change door mode. Now, if you remember from our macro, uh, unlock was part of group A, and then card only was part of group B. So we'll select group B there. Source type will be door. And front door event type. Let's see if I can find it again. Access point unlocked. And most importantly, we're looking for variable one. Okay, so let's test this out real quick. Let's take a look at our door. You know, I've already created an identity, I've created a role and access group for this door. So just to save time, I've already done that. Um, so let's present a card. Okay, so our, there we go. So our door mode changed, so half of it works. So did a double swipe, the door mode changed from uh, card only to unlocked. Now let's see if the reverse works. So I presented my card twice and it goes back to card only mode. So perfect, We our, our macros and triggers work. Um, just a, a, another note or, or something else to point out here. Sometimes I get this question. Uh, as you saw with the first card unlock scenario, we could restrict that action to a specific token. With macros and triggers, you can't really do that. There's not an option in there that allows you to, you know, in this case, when we're, when we're talking about double swipe, there's not an option in there to say, you know, only allow this identity or this token to do this action. There is a workaround, however. Um, what we can do is we can actually use the anti-passback feature to get around that. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if you go to the door configuration and you go to the options tab, down here you have anti-passback mode and anti-passback delay. If you do a door-based timed anti-passback and you set that delay for longer than your double swipe timer. So in this case, we'd set it for six seconds. So now if you see, now, and I'll, I'll show you how, how you actually grant access um, or allow somebody to you know, use the double swipe timer, but let's test, let's make sure it works right. So it should not work this time. So I'm going to swipe my card twice. And if we go over here and look at the events, I did swipe my card twice and we got an anti-passback error. So that's how you pre prevent people from using the double swipe timer. So how do you let people use the double swipe timer? So this is what you would do for people that you want to actually be able to double swipe. You would go to their identity, you would go to tokens, and let's see which token this is. 696, and there's a little checkbox here, APB exempt. So by checking that and saving this, I make, I'm making this token exempt to that door-based anti-passback delay. So now I save this, go back to my door, if I did everything right, I should be able to double swipe again and actually unlock the door. All 
I don't know if I got that within five seconds. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, I guess I did. Okay, perfect. So that's how you get around, uh, uh, you know, the inability to specify a specific token, you know, in the in the double swipe scenario. So with that being said, um, I believe we do have a, uh, let's see. Let's see if we have some questions here. I'm gonna unmute everyone. And I, I thought I, we had a poll uh, here. Yeah, I think I answered all the questions in there. If you wanna just take a glance over it, see if there's something. So someone asked uh, a question about um, NTP for the service starts to lose or drift in time. Can we get some sort of uh, macro policy to, to alert? Uh, it's a different issue. I think I answer. I try to answer as best I could, but it, I think it's a different issue there. If, if your server is drifting in time, in other words, the time is not correct, it's because the time server, the NTP server, is not working or ASIN is not communicating with that server properly. So you want to check that. If you have questions, yeah, file and call, sorry, call tech support and they'll be able to help you with. Uh, uh, setting up the time. You can even have a local time server inside your network. That's not a problem. And also, I've, I've seen this more than once. Uh, if you look at my screen, I'm over in the in the appliance tab. Um, I have seen this. Uh, if you look at it, um, it looks like a time server is set, and a time server is set, but it's set by name, and there's no name server indicated. So ACM won't be able to resolve this name and actually connect to the time server. So make sure you have a uh, DNS or name server in your configuration. So the one right there I that don't... Robert just entered it's a is a Google DNS server. It's free. So if you don't know the local DNS and ACM has the capability to go on an internet, that one right there will resolve the name of the time server and will update the time. Okay. Perfect. Any more questions? Uh, have we got all of them answered? Looks like it. Awesome. Thanks, Francisco. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So we've got, uh, let's see, today's Wednesday. So we have another session on Friday. Uh, Ryan, are you on the line? You want to talk about your session Friday if you are? He is doing a session this Friday on, um, I'm actually looking here real quick. He's going to talk about uh, area control, mustering. So there's really some good features in there that people, I'm not sure if everyone knows that those features are there. So if you, if you could come in on Friday to see this, uh, this presentation, it's really some useful features in, in ATM, controlling areas, uh, counting people inside of that area. Can I let more people in this particular area or not? So there's, there's gonna be some interesting configurations. So if you, uh, if you can come in on Friday, this will be noon Pacific time, noon Pacific time, okay? That's Friday. Monday will be with me. Francisco, and now be covering ACM 6.6 is the new uh, release that's going to come out. We're going to be covering that, and that will be noon Eastern, okay, noon Eastern time. Hope to see you all uh, Friday and next Monday. Back to you, Ryan. Um, Rob? Yeah, thanks, Francisco. Um, yeah, so thank you, everyone, for joining today. Hopefully, you'll be able to join us on Friday. Other than that, I hope everyone has a great afternoon. Thanks again.